Hey everybody, welcome to Halo RV. My name is Josh the RV Nerd and I'll be your guide today with this 3300 pound, what I lovingly refer to as a mutant. <laughs> what I mean by that, this is the Rockwood HW277 high wall pop-up here. It's not a normal tent camper, not a normal pop-up. This is like if somebody took an entire travel trailer and folded it and stuffed it into a suitcase. Kind of like the way that my mother can pack a bag for the airport. Uh, I'm not going to tell you that we have pictures of the kids standing on the suitcase with her running the zipper. I'm just going to tell you that we have pictures of the kids standing on the suitcase with uh, her running the zipper. But that's kind of the cool thing. It has the features of a travel trailer with the towability of a pop-up up camper and that is sometimes a really hard batch of factors to put together by the way you like this sexy eyewear that i got going on here today thanks osha <laughs> So right up here on the tongue they have themselves just a real simple easy power lift system does all the work for you It is a bit noisy though, so uh, if you do get to your campsite late and you're setting up camp like after dark, um, do something cool in the morning like pay your, your neighbors a visit with some cookies to kind of smooth over waking them up overnight, you know what I mean? <laughs> sure, I'll tell you what though, sure beats uh, cranking and swearing at this thing overnight. <laughs> And once again, what's really cool about this one is that we get, we're, we're towing like a 14 foot camper, you know, on the way to your destination, but you get something, I don't, I don't have the hard specs in front of me. I posted them at the beginning of the video if you need a reference, but you're closer to like something like a 24 foot camper, I think when it's all opened up because our beds don't eat up our floor space. Plus you get the slide offering some extra space. All the room that you get in here is absolutely awesome. I will mention this again as we go outside, but I want to give you uh, an early reference point. This is a one piece entry door. There's a little traveling door that you remove when you reach your destination. The reason I like a one piece door is because the handle is up here where you can reach it instead of all the way down by our shins, which is really not easy or comfortable to deal with, uh, you know, <laughs> when you're, uh, got, you got a hand full of stuff. Now, what is cool about this one is the bed sizes. Show me a camper that has like a, a, a 14 foot total, 12 or 12 or 14 foot, whatever it is, box size, that has a 70 by 80 king front bed and 60 by 80 queen rear bed, plus a folding dinette. These are some of the biggest sleeping spaces you could ever get in a little camper like this. And they are uh, front and rear heated mattresses. Um, now that uh, handheld controller will actually plug into the mattress over in this space. Again, I, what I'm doing here today because we need to fold this camper back down and take it out for display is I've just done a quick setup. I just wanted you to get to see a little handheld heated controller, but there you go. Now up top here, uh, just like they do in the Rockwood Roo hybrids, they include these handy bunk light fan jobs. And these things are good, not just for, because there's no way to run wiring down here. But it is nice to be able to uh, have a little bit of airflow going through this thing. Now, there's different ways that you can mount these. If you want to take this down, you want to hook it up like this, you want to hook it up like that, you can do just about anything. And now that I've dislodged it with one hand, I'm going to have to let it carefully dangle there. But you can see how much of a difference it makes on the light going down there. Speaking of which here, we're going to use this in flashlight mode. How about that? We're, 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 we're adapting, you know, improvise, adapt, overcome. <laughs> Um, we've got our cargo hammock up here. Um, not a baby hammock, cargo hammock. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you've got some extra duffel bags or just some loose stuff that you want to put up there, you want to put some daytime blankets up there and then pull them down during the day you can. Pockets up in that vicinity for, uh, you know, if you got your phones or anything like that. We're going to go back to dangulation mode on this thing. Actually, you know what? It's just going to bother me the whole time. Pardon me a minute as I reattach that. It doesn't take much, but when you're running a camera in real time, it, it's kind of a hard thing to do. Now, we are going to see a ton of counter space in this one, um, especially when we get to like the proper primary kitchen space. But I mean, there's there's countertop function, prep space, folding clothing space, whatever you want. You want a place to set, you know, your plate or whatever you can. Th there's a ton of square foot of counter space in here. That is a three way refrigerator, by the way, that is 12 volt, 110 and propane operated and right over here you see some more outlets and tv hookups so if you want it this could also be your entertainment space here and this does have like park cable hookups which is kind of a cool thing it's yet another th reason that i kind of call this a uh, a mutant camper because it has all those travel trailer features wrapped up into a uh, you know a a pop-up kind of space 
Our big U dinette over here, once again, completely carpetless. Normally, I would prefer a free floating table because I could take it outside. I will say, I actually like what Rockwood did here with the pedestals because it is a little bit of a step up slide. You can't put a floor flush slide in a little pop up like this, like you would a uh, you know Rockwood trailer or fifth wheel. But the uh, the idea here is that if you bump the table, it's not going to accidentally uh, slide w well <laughs> out of the slide. <laughs> And to really maximize our sleeping space, you got the king front bed, the queen rear, and the big fold-down dinette over here. I think one grown adult would get along just fine over there. Two littles would probably be fine for a weekend. To, to I mean, you could really pack them and stack them in here. The water heater, by the way, is located under that bench, which is why there's not full storage below it. I do like that they still left you a pocket. Um, all of our cushions, uh, you know, from the daytime dinette mode fit very nicely there. And that storage compartment right there under that bench actually goes all the way through to the exterior of the camper as well. Now, I have only done a quick setup on this, keep in mind. Uh, this does have a handy little wet bath over here. Now, you're not on public display open to the world. You can see how there is a, uh, a shower curtain track right there. You might have noticed how it overlaps a little bit. So, you know, you don't have to feel like, you know, you're you're on direct view public display. It is a little camper. It has a small space. And sometimes, you know, this, this is the best you're going to get in a little situation like this. But where a lot of people will use this is they'll say, okay, if it's raining at night and the kids need to use the potty, we'll let them use this real quick. Uh, some people will say, man, I, I bought the camper. I want to use, you know, the toilet and the everything. And remember, if you're not going to use it, you know, like you've got the shower hook up in there, you've obviously got a full toilet situation, you can take a shower. You could obviously use the bathroom in here. But remember, you could always just fold that down and use it as counter space too. But let me know what you think. Would you even use the bathroom in this? Because a lot of people don't. And there's nothing that says you have to. And it's really funny. I've noticed a very interesting thing. Somebody help me understand this. A lot of folks will buy some kind of pop-up fold-down camper specifically because it has a bathroom. That is on my list of must-haves, they say. And then they trade it in like four or five years later. Oh, yeah, we never use the bathroom. We just always use the bathhouses. I think that folks, especially first-timers, you know, the way that you live in your house and the way that you camp in your camper, they're not exactly always the same thing, especially on something like this. So don't... You know, don't feel like you have to. Maybe if it makes you feel better, some peace of mind. Um, maybe you're a person with IBS, and if you wake up in the middle of the night, you're like, no, I, I can't wait. Well, maybe that works for you. But, you know, I think for a lot of people, the bathhouse method works pretty well. It all depends, I think, on how you camp. Now, here's another travel trailer feature in this folding camper, a full-size roof air conditioner. Um, now, obviously, the camper's not insulated the way a travel trailer is, but that will, oh my gosh, if it's screaming hot outside, you'll be happy that you have that right there. But what is cool, because they build that standard, they don't have to worry about, well, do we give them a big fan or do we give them an air conditioner? And they give you both! So you get, you know, if you're going to be off-grid boondocking, you only have 12 volt available, you don't have a little portable inverter generator kind of thing that we can offer here at Halo RV. Uh, wink, wink, hint, hint, by the way. <laughs> You've got that big fan up there to really pull in some air. And all of these panels, you see that zipper? Everything here can zip down. I've got the curtains drawn right now for privacy mode, but the fact is if you want 360 degrees of airflow and visibility, nothing, nothing will accomplish that better than a pop-up folding camper. But over here, guys, the, the, the counter space, it's, it's silly. Um... <sighs> I don't even know what to say about it. It's just, it's massive. And when I first looked at this space, I thought, you know, that'd be a good little pantry for the camper. Although, uh, right by a bed like that, it could also definitely function as something like a dresser. I think it just really depends on, you know, how you pack, how you camp, and what's going to work best for you. But as we pivot over here, I mean, not only do we have huge counters. This has more counter space than a lot of fifth wheels I've seen. The counter space in this is scientifically redonkulous. I asked Siri to Google it, and that's what she said. Trust me. <laughs> like a full oven in a folding camper. Once again, that's that's one of those mutant qualities I was telling you about. That is an interesting kind of like under the dinette, inside-outside pass-through. We'll get another look at that from the exterior. But even here in, uh, you know, just in a pop-up camper, they don't skimp on their construction. Like, we are still full plywood box 
drawer construction. They're not using particle board and sticker wrap on a lesser expensive product. You know, they, they make sure that this is up to their Rockwood standards, basically. And over here, I think that would make a really good interior wastebasket space, although I have a suggestion for you on one for the exterior. Now, when we get over here, you might look at this and say, wait a minute, why did they put brackets, hinges, on both sides of those doors? Um, remember that behind this big chunk of counter space is actually the outdoor uh, camp kitchen. So those are access panels to get to some of the plumbing things like the propane, the water hookup um, for the sink in the camp kitchen itself. But next to the furnace over here, they did still have a pocket that they opened up inside for us. Anything that they could, they allowed us to use indoors. They had to dedicate a little bit of space to this outside, but I also don't think they're exactly lacking in interior storage space on this one, do you? So what do you think so far, ladies and gentlemen? Leave me a couple comments. Like it, dislike it, have a question, let me know. Now something I always like to do for you here at Halo RV is close up the campers and show them in what I call travel mode. Usually on a big trailer or fifth wheel that means, you know, closing the slides up and letting you walk around inside it a little bit from my point of view. But in the case of a pop-up, I think it means something, you know, a little bit different. And I think this is a really good way to kind of illustrate the towability of one of these as compared to, uh, well, you know, say a, a more traditional travel trailer. Because if you look at the physical size of this thing, it's only seven foot wide, meaning it's easy to see around. It's typically not much wider than your vehicle. Although I do always recommend towing extension mirrors. That's just, you know, don't skimp on the safety, ladies and gentlemen. But the fact that it's all folded down, it's down below the wind signature of your vehicle. Sometimes uh, a little less so maybe on a high wall like this but you can still often have at least a peek through your rear view mirror but the fact is it doesn't stick up really high where it's like you know a uh, <laughs> a big headwind sailboat behind you and this is kind of what I mean right here I'm about six three ish with my hat and boots on and all that stuff and you can see the air conditioner sticks up just a little bit above my head right here so it's not you know by contrast if I go standing next to one of these travel trailers it's much much bigger behind us it feels far more scary and imposing when you're towing. But one of these little guys, you know, you can park it in a garage, you can park it under a lean-to, in the corner of a barn under a hayloft or something like that. They're just, they're a lot easier to, to kind of tuck away and pack away and jerk around when you get there. Very nice if you're gonna go into like national parks or places with a lot of little trees that are hanging down that, you know, would scrape up the side of a bigger trailer. You don't, you don't want to have to deal with any of that. Now you don't have to deal with any of that. Not to mention with things like the, uh, the pro rack cargo rack system that we're looking at right here. If you want to mount some bicycles or a kayak or a cargo pod or any number of different things, there's all kinds of different cleats and, and things that hook into these mounts. Uh, you could do just about anything you want here and you can reach it. You don't need to be, you know, 10 feet in the air on a stepladder while wrestling with a kayak, which uh, uh, obviously not the safest thing in the world when you say it out loud, is it? One other note here for you while we got her down. This is the Wi-Fi Ranger, basically. Folks, you've got a router in your house probably that broadcasts like Wi-Fi through your house. That's basically what that thing is. You, uh, you're gonna, you know, attach it to a local signal access point or there is the ability to upgrade that to an LTE system. Uh, if you want to have easier access to mobile data sources. What's kind of cool about that is if you uh, hook your phones to it, you only need to like sync the Wi-Fi Ranger one time to a local source, then your phones, your tablets, your whatever will all auto-sync back to the Wi-Fi Ranger when you get there. Pretty handy. And I thought starting over here broadside to this big girl would be like the perfect place to begin our campsite adventure because I think this is what you're going to be looking at most of the time. Now up top there we've got that big long awning. One of the nice benefits of a bigger pop-up is you get more patio like space. But right below that like a travel trailer once again we have that Obi-Wan Kenobi blue lightsaber awning lighting right there. Of course any real nerd knows that Obi-Wan actually had three different lightsabers during his time, but I think we all know that. We don't need to spend any more time talking about that. Anyway, this is, uh, I, I think, one of the most unique aspects of this camp right here is that it has, well, I, I think, you know, what really qualifies is a camp kitchen, which is something that pop-up campers of any variety, even high walls, typically do not have because it takes a significant space. <coughs> Pardon me, literally choked on thin air. <laughs> 
uh, space requirement to do this. So over here, a couple things. You see, you've got yourself a little uh, stove top burner system, and now that is like a slide out, easily removable tote drawer thing. But one of the things I like about this one is I can get you down here to show the fact that that is a real sink with a real drain into a holding tank. It's not a dog dish that you got to flip on the ground because, you know, the parks, the neighbor person, you know, at the seasonal site next to you, they sure don't appreciate it when you're doing stuff like that. But in typical Rockwood fashion, they never do just enough. They always go further. And not just a two burner stovetop, but also a, uh, a removable griddle mount here and a handy little kind of work table that goes right between them. So if you want a place to set the platter, so you know, you can, it, depending on what you're cooking over here, cooking over here, you got a place to set your tongs, maybe you got a platter to set the meat when you're done, a couple brats, a couple burgers, whatever the case may be. And now I want a brat and a burger. <laughs> Um, they're also very good about not wasting any space. Now, you might notice there's a door right there. This does pass through from inside to outside. And you know what I thought about that? It's maybe a little unconventional, maybe not what they intended. But speaking from experience, having an outside access point to a trash can in a camper is incredibly helpful. And I think that maybe a small little wastebasket right there that, you know, you could use like Walmart bags as, as wastebasket uh, liners, that would work really well. And look at this, the, the stable step system here, like you'd find on a big rock wood. This has a removable travel door that we'll actually see on the back of the camper with a one piece entry door. Now, what I like about this is when the travel doors handle is down here, it's no big deal. But when you're walking out of the camper, when it's down by your shins, that kind of sucks. A one piece entry door allows for easier come and go. Uh, additionally, those uh, sliding, well, well, I kind of ruined it. The door panels slide. The sliding door panels slide. <laughs> Screwed myself up. You get the idea. Um, so if you want to get some good airflow in those, you can't. Remember, like every section of this uh, canvas tent stuff that we're looking at, it's actually not tent material. It's not canvas material. It's a material called Duratec, which is, a, it, it's, it, it itself has a five-year warranty. It's a composite five-layered material. Um, the uh, Duratec material right there, uh, all sections can zip down. You can have 360 degrees of viewing and airflow. And again, another feature like a travel trailer you find on this pop-up camper is the double propane tank system with automatic changeover regulator. Now you can see they're also uh, including an extra large battery box. There is room on here for two batteries. Now Rockwood includes the big box. They just don't include any batteries, which is uh, nice of them. The good news is here from Halet RV, we'll have your first battery included at no additional charge. Similarly, we clean the camper, show you how it works, which includes on a pop-up camper, a big high wall like this, that's a significant time investment flipping stuff up and down for you. But, you know, you deserve to know how this stuff works. This is complicated if you don't know how to do it. And once you do, it's really not a big deal. So, got our shore power hookup, city water. Uh, and now down here we have our cable hookup and a full outside shower. That's yet another thing pop-up campers don't often have. Our uh, 11 gallon per hour auto ignition water heater right there. And again, some storage space directly below uh, the, uh, the dinette there. You see how it actually curls around a little bit. So whether it is again, inside or outside, you got uh, pass through storage, which is, and even that's a magnet hold back. Rockwood always takes it up a notch, you know what I mean? Now down here, this is one of the things I think is really interesting. And it's yet another reason I call this a mutant. And again, I mean so lovingly. It is fully self-contained. This is not a cassette toilet system. It has on board fresh gray black tanks like a travel trailer. Folding campers, as these are technically called, do not typically have that kind of system. It's it's different, it's cool. I love that it's all on board like that. Some folks, what do you, I know some folks uh, prefer a cassette toilet though. Like I would really like some consumer feedback. Leave me a note, do you prefer you know, fully self-contained cassette toilet. Like, what is your preference? We have all LED tail and marker lights. Um, the uh, spare tire on the back here has a hard shell cover. Always uh, a rock with thing that they do. And this is that travel door that I was telling you about. When you get to your destination, you know, you don't want to just leave it hanging off the side of the trailer. You don't want to haul it inside the trailer. There's not a, not a lot of room to be storing the stupid thing. You know what I mean? So they give you a place back here where you can hook it. Now, it actually, it can fold up and, and basically completely hide under that rear bed when you're not using it. I just left it down so it was very obvious where you folks, you know, where it would be. Now, another thing I didn't mention, maybe you saw it, down by the sewer hookups, this also has one of those really handy 
uh, sewer hose kind of caddy tube things because obviously storage is limited and they don't want you putting your black tank sewer hose stuff mixed in with all your other fresh camping stuff. And it, it's just little thought and attention and details like that that always take Rockwood over the top for me. So whether you're planning to get off into the sticks or maybe you just want something smaller, feels a little more comfortable towing, you want to put it off in the corner of the garage, whatever the case may be, these can work for a lot of different folks. Um, they've been very popular here for a lot of years and I think it's because they bring a lot of feature to a small space. The whole thing, it's, <laughs> it's a grower, not a shower. <laughs> <laughs> I think you get exactly what I mean when you see this though. There's a ton of camper here in a small space. So if she looks good, you have any questions, leave me some comments. Let me know what do you like about them? What do you dislike? Do you, uh, anything that I've missed that I need to fill in the blanks? Let me know and we'll always do our best to fill in. Short of that, remember we don't do hidden dealer fees. We only do everything else. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping everyone.